What's up guys, Demon or 1, 2, and 2, and it's List Day. Ah yes, List Day. And today we are continuing our series of looking at the top 10 best cards in every main set of the game. And you guys thought it would take forever to make the next one. Haha! <laughs> uh, I had nothing else better to do this week. And I figured the set we are on is Extreme Victory. And it's the last set of the Synchro Era, so it'd be really weird to stop now. Like, if I'm gonna, like, take a pause on the series again, it would be the next one, the start of the XC Era, not the last of the Synchro my OCD won't have that. The Sincrera came in like a lion and kind of goes out like a fart because this series, this set's not very good. The best card in the set isn't even for Synchros, it's for the entire next mechanic, so feels bad, man. However, there is a few cards in this set that are pretty solid, at least 10 of them, spoiler alert. So, uh, sure, let's get through this, uh, set of cards. Number 10 is the normal trap card, Full House. Everywhere you look, there's a card. I hope it doesn't get banned. Stupid Konami banning my stuff. Brutal Factor 3. This is a really strange card that is totally power crept by Storm Duster, but does have an interesting function when played against. Uh, pendulums? You need to target two face-up speller traps on the field and three set speller traps on the field. Destroy them. Hence the full house reference of the name. It's, it's two and three. It, it's COD games. Obviously the biggest problem with this card is that it, it, it's quite specific in its activation condition. It requires a very unique thing to be happening on the field. However, in later Yu-Gi-Oh! in the future, we do get pendulums which does automatically put two face-up spell cards on the field. So, in theory, against a pendulum deck and then maybe a, that also is playing a bunch of back row, this could be used conceivably to nuke their back row. Obviously, we have cards like Feather Duster, Storm Duster, Lightning Storm, literally Mystical Space Typhoon in most cases. There's tons of better cards, but this does serve an interesting function, and if you can activate it, it's probably a total blowout. And it doesn't specify opponent's cards, so in theory, you could do it to yours that want to get blown up or something. So there, there is some function to be had here. Number nine, Scrath Orthos. Honey, I'm home. It's about bloody damn time. Look, Merrick, we got a new addition to the family. Is that thing a robot? Bark. Bark. Woof. Initiating crotch sniffing protocol. This good boy is a level 4 earth machine monster with the following effect. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must first be special summoned while you control another scrap monster. Ah, there you go. It's an extender. What do you know, in a wombo combo deck like scraps, seems like the exact kind of thing you would like to do. You're trying to synchro summon a bunch of times, it's an extender. It's Kagure Kage, but a puppy. However, it does play into the strategy a little bit more because it also has an effect that says, if summoned this way, you can target one scrap monster on your side of the field, destroy that monster. And in any other deck, that would sound like it's pretty bad. You don't want to summon a guy that pops one of your other guys. Feels bad, man. However, scraps do stuff when they're blown up by other scraps. It's how the deck functions. So yeah, it makes total sense this card would do that. Matter of fact, it has a third effect that says, if this thing is destroyed by another scrap card, target a scrap monster in your graveyard, add that card to your hand. So yeah, just like every other scrap monster, if it is blown up, it also does something. So there you go. Number eight, Psychic Feel Zone. This normal spell card has the following effecto. Select two monsters removed from play, one Psychic Tuner and one Psychic Non-Tuner monster. Return them to the graveyard and special summon one Psychic Synchro monster from your extra deck whose levels equal the combined levels of those two things. In defense position. Basically, it's allowing you to perform a pseudo-synchro summon with stuff in your banish pile. Tons of Psychic decks tend to like to banish themselves, it just seems to be the kind of the thing that they do. However, what this card really does work particularly well with is your Psy Frames. Your Psy Frames are hand-trapped monsters that like to summon themselves to the field with Driver, which is their non-tuner normal monster, and then banish themselves at the end of the turn. If you have done that, you now have a tuner and non-tuner Psychic-type monsters in your banish pile. You can now use Psychic Field Zone to summon, like, Omega or something. This card is basically tailor-made to undo the one weird bad thing that the, the hand-trapped monsters do, is get themselves off the board if you don't do anything with them. So at the time of it coming out, it might not exactly have tons of function, but it certainly gets better with time when a deck that can utilize it properly does come out. Number seven is the Continuous Trap Card Safe Zone. 
The way safe zone works is if your monster is feeling quite emotionally vulnerable, you can activate this card and it w it can share its feelings and not have to be worried about being judged. F***ing idiot. In the psychic feel zone. Obviously, that's not what it does. Target one face-up attack position monster you control. Your opponent cannot destroy it by battle or card effects, and they can target it with card effects. But that monster cannot attack directly. If this thing leaves the field, or the monster it's targeted leaves the field, the other one leaves the field as well. Obviously, the point of safe zone is to make a safe zone for the monster you have targeted. It turns the monster you targeted into something that's actually kind of hard for your opponent to deal with, but does not allow you to attack your opponent directly, so you can kind of do this defend the castle thing. It might be a bit slow and does mean that your monster is now killable via MST, because this thing doesn't protect itself, only the monster it's targeting. However, this did see some decent competitive play in a protect the castle type strategy. And honestly, if we get something that's like trap trick for continuous traps at some point, I can see this being actually starting to see play again, because, you know, it, it's only a matter of time that the it's a trap card is no longer a problem for a card. Like, given the right support, I can see this actually being pretty solid. Number six is the counter trap card Debunk. Merrick, Merrick, are you home? Oh, it's my sister Shizu. Welcome to our humble abode. Thank you for inviting me. I brought you what the outside world refers to as a housewarming gift. Oh, it's Stevie Nicks' greatest hits on nine cassette tapes. Yes, I got it at Goodwill. By the way, Merrick, what the hell is that? Oh, that's the bunk bed. This counter trap card has the following effect. When a monster activates this effect in the hand or graveyard, negate that activation, and if you do, banish it. Obviously, the modern function of this card is to use it against something like a hand trap, like Ash Blossom enjoys feet. Trouble is, hand traps are best used when you are turn two player, using them against turn one player, so turn one player setting a trap card to stop you from doing that, it's a bit slow and it will never come up most of the time. However, that would be probably its best function nowadays. Back in the day, however, it was probably that graveyard effect it was stopping, and honestly could certainly be used nowadays to stop your opponent from doing uh, Salamangre stuff, or Orcus stuff, Eldritch stuff. Even in modern you go, actually probably even more so, we have tons of effect monsters using their effects in the graveyard, so you could make the point that this card is pretty solid. However, uh, I think it just gets outdone by Called by the Grave. However, Called by the Grave I think just got put to one, so debunks time to shine, I suppose. Pretty solid card that has seen some competitive success, just uh, a little bit power creeped. Number five is the continuous spell card, Sheen's Dojo. Zero out of 10, Davinator doesn't know what six Sams do. Worst card in the set. I might not have to play the deck, but I can certainly understand why this card would be considered pretty good. Every time a six samurai monster is normal or special summoned to the field, which is pretty much the only summoning you're going to be doing with your six Sams, place one Bushido counter on this card. And yes, I understand that this is Davinator saying that a card that gets counters is actually good. And yes, normally those suck. However, uh, Six Sams does a lot of summoning on their turn. They spam a lot. So accruing Bushido counters is certainly not something the deck cannot do. You can send this card to the graveyard and special summon a Six Sam or Sheehan monster right from your main deck whose level equals the number of Bushido counters that were on this card. Send this card to the graveyard to special summon one Sheehan or Six Samurai monster directly from your main deck whose level is equal to or less than the number of Bushido counters that was on this card when you sent it. So yeah, you play this card, it's kind of do nothing, nothing happens, but you summon a bunch and you get a free guy. And like I said, it might not do something immediately when it hits the field, but it's pretty easy to accrue these counters, which will let you extend out and get any monster you want from your deck basically that you're going to care about, because you're just making all the level fours anyway. And because it just says six samurai, and not like legendary six samurai or secret six samurai, it, it just gets all of them. It covers the whole archetype. So that is good future proofing Konami. Overall it just extends the deck out and lets it do its stupid wombo combos to basically just let it infinitely summon. Overall really solid card for the deck. 
Number four is, oh boy, Kara Curry Komachi Model 224 Nianshi. I swear, this whole archetype has tried to make it so that the name of the monster is longer than its effect text. Rest in peace, anyone trying to use Prohibition against this deck. <laughs> and yes, I understand that you actually don't need to name the card specifically in Prohibition. You can just describe it enough for both players to understand and a judge. So yes, I do get that. However, that ruins my joke. What the hell does this robo lady in a kimono even do? I don't know. If there's a deck I know less about than Six Samurai, this character curries. This card must attack if able. Wow, with zero attack power, that's gonna be a problem. However, it's probably not gonna stay on board long enough for that even to matter. So, okay, sure. I think it's just a balance it's last effect because you're probably normal summoning this at least that was probably the idea of how a play line would start if this face up card is targeted for an attack you can change the defense position well that's at least nice because it does have zero attack power and 1900 defense isn't the worst but it's also not the greatest so again this is a synchro spam deck this is not going to stand board anyway Nah, the big, the big effecto that we actually care about is... During your main phase, you can normal summon one Kara Curry monster in addition to your normal, normal summoner set. Basically, it's double summon. You can only gain this effect once per turn. It's, it's, it's Evil Storm Caster. A monster that allows you to normal summon again is just basic Yu-Gi-Oh spam. You normal summon this, you can normal summon something else. No special summons have even occurred yet. Feels good for an extender slash starter. And she's got just... The prettiest kimono. And because like the synchro monsters like summon from the deck and stuff, this is one of the cards you could totally get, which will allow you to like extend your plays out even more. Yeah, this the, the play lines are real with this deck. Number three is TG Striker. There's a couple of TG monsters in this uh in this set, but we figured that TG Striker would be the poster boy for that, because He's actually pretty good. This level two Earth Warrior Tuner monster has the following effect. If only your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. And it has the second effect that during the end phase, if this card was on the field and it was destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can add one TG monster from your deck to your hand, except TG Striker. Strikers are another synchro spam deck. And the fact that this thing just puts itself on board is it's just a free monster. So obviously when you're trying to play more monsters so that you can play more monsters, it's really nice that you can just play your monsters. <laughs> and you can totally use it to make noodle fiber because everything can make noodle fiber. We're gonna have every single tuner monster banned by the by the end of next format. Stupid Chris Johns. <laughs> And the fact that it's a warrior means, hey, you can make his old with it too. That's kind of slick. Number two is Reborn Tengu. Reborn Tengu is a level four wind beast warrior monster with the following effect. Oh. If this face up card leaves the field, special summon one Reborn Tengu from your deck. So yeah, you send this thing to the grave to like, I don't know, synchro summon. You can just summon another one of these from your deck. This card was on the forbidden limited list for a while because it's just free. You use it to make something, you get a free another one right from your deck. Just a fantastic card. It's searchable by a tanky because it's a beast warrior nice. nice and being a level four wind is certainly not the worst thing in the world there's just some fun stuff you can do with that especially when we get into the next era of Yu-Gi-Oh with the Xyz which spoiler alert is definitely also something good about the next card <laughs> however detaching this thing for an Xyz material doesn't actually cause its effect to work overall a pretty solid resource management card not nearly as broken as it used to be but still pretty solid if you manage to stick it in your deck all right, we do have an honorable mention because, like I said, this set isn't the most fantastic. It is kind of underwhelming for the last set of the Synchro Era. But we did get a couple of good tuner monsters. It is the Synchro Era after all, so how about Unknown Synchron? Level 1 Dark Machine Tuner Monster. Ooh, and it's a Synchron? Oh man, that's some searchable shit right there. And hey, look at this. If your opponent controls a monster and you don't, you can just special summon this thing from your hand. <laughs> Sounds like needle fiber to me. Oh my god, Halka Fabrax is gonna get us to ban si every single freaking tuner. That was a joke before, but now I'm starting to think maybe... Oh no. If the tuner monster special summons itself in any way, even if it's clumsy, it's gotta get stuck on the ban list for one stupid combo -y boy. Feels bad, man. However, it does have a once per duel effect. You can only special summon it this way once per duel. Once per duel is, is a pretty rare restriction on card effects, so it's almost like Konami was like, yeah, a tuner that can just put itself on board does seem pretty free. You can only do that once. Kind of like how Glow Up Bob only lets it summon itself back from the grave once. <laughs> but uh, but you only needed to do it once to summon Halka for Brax, so that's... Uh... 
And it's a Synchron. Search by tuning. And <laughs> level one machine. Oh, and it's dark. This card's actually pretty solid. Maybe could have put it on the list proper. I don't know. But to make up for whether or not this should have been number 10 or not, uh, we do have a dishonorable mention. It's Localized Tornado. Holy shit, does this card freaking suck. It's incredibly disrespectful. This normal trap card has the following effect. Shuffle all cards from your hand and your graveyard into your deck, period. And that's all it does. You don't get to draw two. You don't get to draw one. You don't get to gain an even any life points, which wouldn't even be good as to begin with, but you, you get nothing for it. Yes, there are decks like Infernities that would rather you not have a hand, but they would certainly like you to have a graveyard. If it only shuffled your hand into your deck, it would be bad, but at least could be used for something. It's bad, but you could use it, but nah. It also shuffles your graveyard, so any setup is totally lost as well. You are literally left with nothing when you activate this thing. It's also a trap card, so it takes till turn three for it to even be usable. Unless you want to do it during your opponent's turn. Man, I got Ash Blossom and Effect Veiler and DD Crow in my hand. I could use them to stop my opponent. Nah, I think I'll put them back in my deck for later. <laughs> That's a surprise tool that can help us later. I, I don't know, this card's fucking terrible. I'm really struggling to figure out a reason for it. Please, in the comments below, give me something you can use this for. I can't think of anything. It's so bad. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. All right, number one, tour guide from the underworld. I'm gonna use this moment to dissuade any rumors that once I hit 50,000 subscribers, I will cosplay as this thing. I'm not doing that. Dante's actual waifu has the following effect. When this card is normal summon, you can special summon one level three fiend monster from your deck. Its effects are negated and it can't be used as synchro material. Yes, tour guide from the underworld came out in the last set of the synchro era with a restriction that can't be used as synchro material. That seems really weird. And I bet there was a couple of people scratching their heads when this set was new thinking, well, what the freak are you supposed to use it for? You're supposed to use it for Xyz. They, they gave this to us like a set early for whatever reason. It's two free level three monsters you can overlay and to make any rank three monster you want. That's what tour guide is for. And she just got put to three, right? Yeah, right? So hell yeah, she's back to full strength, Burning Abyss, best deck of the format. Jeez, that deck's been solid for like five years? Like I said, it's, 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 it's Dante's actual waifu. Screw his dead wife in hell. He's got a girl who just kind of works there. <laughs> Cute Pigtails is a redhead. Urza Scarlet, Rhea's Gremory, Mari from Itadeki Saikai, Tour guy from the underworld. I got one more in me. Ooh, summon sorceress. Ooh. What's up guys? Weebinator1212 here. Uh, come back next week and this will just be covered in anime waifus. I'm just gonna give into it and just live in a basement or something. But ah, yes, tour guy from the underworld, the one shining star of this otherwise kind of lackluster set. Anyway guys, that was the list. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Christina Hendricks. Ooh. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblin Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, 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 look who's back. Be sure to subscribe to the channel this time, or I will use my Millennium Rod and do devious, devious things to you. Evil things. Also, by the way, Bakora never did ever get that milk. I did get the bloody milk. No, you didn't. This is oat milk. It's not real milk. It needs to come from a cow. How do you milk an oat?